We give all the glory to God for his blessing during this uh, revival and for the transformations of our lives. That is the objective or that is the main purpose of the word of God. That when it comes to us and we receive it, our life is transformed. And I pray that all the blessings of this revival will remain in our lives in the name of Jesus. And our lives that have been transformed, corruption will not come near it anymore in the name of Jesus. So we have been talking about uncommon grace. And for the past two days, we've heard um, transforming messages. But for today, and in the time that we have, I want to make ready your spirit to be able to meditate upon this unique type of uh, grace so that we are able to pray at the end with understanding. The word grace in the Bible is an attribute of God. It broadly describes the activities, the whole of God's activity towards man. The word grace, it describes the whole of God's activities towards man. In many places and at many times in the Bible, Apostle Paul associates grace with activities of God towards man for three, I would say, three main objectives. Number one, it is to show that the grace of God abounds and is without limit or boundary. The grace of God as an attribute of God that describes the whole spectrum of God's activity towards man is it abounds, is without limit, and is without boundary. The second objective is that the knowledge of the abounding and the limitless grace of God will spur our confidence and our love in God. So that as we have the knowledge that the grace of God abounds, it's plentiful, it's, it's, it's available, it's limitless, it's, it has no boundary, the knowledge of that will make our love and confidence in, in God to grow. And lastly, that this love and the confidence that we have in God will motivate us and move our spirit with the desire to be like him, to imitate him. That is the spectrum of the grace of God, that at the end of the day, we are like God because this grace of God will have done its job in our lives. So there are instances of grace in the Bible, especially uh, the ones that, uh, uh, um, that man experienced, that we have named people that experienced the grace of God in their lives. They abound in the Bible. The very first mention of it is in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. We know about Noah when the Bible said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. I so much love that verse because when you read everything that has been coming, you see the wickedness and the, and the atrocities of men and the plan of God to destroy the world, but separates Noah put Noah in a special cl class, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So from Genesis all the way to Revelations, we have instances of grace being experienced by man. But the inspiration for this revival is the uniqueness of the grace that Lord received. That is the inspiration for this revival. The uniqueness of grace that Lord received. And you will see why it is so unique as we go on 
in the word of God today. So let's open our Bible so that we can pick up the story of Lot in uh, Genesis chapter 19. But I just want to give you a quick summary of the whole story uh, so we don't have to read um, the entire passage that tells us about this life of Lot. The first thing there is that Lot found himself in a very wicked environment and he could not live on his own free will. He was just in a community that is so wicked, in a community that is so anti-God, in a community that is so corrupt, in a community that they don't care to waste his life. And there was nowhere else he could go to. The Bible tells us about Abraham having famine. He went to Egypt. When, when if a place is not conducive for you, you pack your load and you move on. But there was just no, no self-will, no, no resources, no, I wouldn't say opportunity, but just the ability to carry himself and said, I'm leaving this town, was not there for him. Let's, let's, let's uh, see what the scripture says about that. Let's open to 2 Peter uh, chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. If the media could put it up for us. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. I'll read quickly from verse 6. 2 Peter chapter 2. Read from verse 6. I'll read. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into heaps of ashes and swept them off the face of the earth, it made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. And delivered righteous Lord who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. He was also tormented. Not that the place was conducive for him. Not that he was able to tolerate it. Not that he, he, he separated himself and he could, he could uh, walled off his own quarters and, and live his own life. No. The wickedness and the atrocities of that city also had an impact upon him. They were wasting his life away. He was being tormented in that situation, but he could just not extract himself out of it. That was what Peter said concerning it. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 18 and also look at the condition that he was in uh, at that time. So I will pick it up from uh, verse uh, 20. 18, Genesis 18 from verse 20. And the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that had come to me, and if not, I will know. So he found himself in a very wicked situation. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation too that we just, we couldn't muster enough ability or no matter how much we do, no matter how much we try, we just cannot get out of that situation. So I want us to be making that comparison so that when we begin to pray, we pray with understanding. That was the first summary about Lord. In a wicked environment that wants to waste his life. Number two, God sent his angels to warn him and request him to leave the city. So we find that in Genesis 19 from verse 12. Then the men said to Lot, have you anyone else, son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city 
take them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. That place where Lot was living was marked for destruction. It was marked for destruction because he was living and dining, going in and out with wicked people. So God had mercy upon him and sent angels to warn him and request him to leave the city. When we look at the story of Noah, God also was about to destroy the whole world. So God sent a message to him and said, be prepared. I am taking you out of this place because I need to destroy this place where you are. But this is what makes the grace of Lot uncommon. This is what makes it uncommon. Let's, uh, and that is our anchor verse. Let's read it, verse 16. And while he lingered, I'll pick it up from verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord be merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. It's like Lord was bundled out of destruction. He lingered, he hesitated, because he just couldn't bring himself to vacate this place, to leave the situation that he has found himself. And the angel took his hand. You know, when I was reading and preparing the sermon, uh, a funny image that came to my mind was that, the, is that image of a, a, a young child that you want to take to school. You know, in those days when kids start school, they don't want to go back the following day. And you see their mom holding their hands and the guy kicking and screaming and the mom just say, you're going to go to school today. And just dragging the boy or the, the little girl behind her taking them to school. God bundled Lord and took him out of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is what makes the grace uncommon. Because when we compare with other people that receive similar uh, uh, information, similar advice, similar guidance to vacate a wicked place, when we compare their reaction and their action and what they need to do with this of Lord, we will know that this is what makes it uncommon. So how does it apply to us? It applies to us that there are some situations that we need to cry unto God to bundle us and take us out of it. Not because of the prayer we are going to pray, or of the fasting we are going to fast, or the night vigil we are going to pray, but we just need that come on common grace of God to just bundle us and just extract us from that evil situation that seeks to waste or to want to waste our life and to take us to a place where we can begin to fulfill our destiny. That is why we need to ask for that uncommon grace. When we have done all we could, when, 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 when the battle is so much, when the agony is so much, when the persecution is so much, and, and, and we, just, we just couldn't really figure it out, we just need to ask, Lord, in this situation, I need your uncommon grace to just bundle me, to just hold my hand and get me out of this situation. And that is the prayer we're going to pray uh, at the end of this sermon. So, that is what makes this grace uncommon. God bundled him out of the destruction when he lacked the willpower or the ability to do it by himself. The Bible says that Lord lingered. We know the story of a deer that is caught in the headlights. They don't know which way to run. 
Should, should they run straight to the headlight or run away from the headlight or run to the left? They, they, they are frozen in place. And before you know it, the vehicle will just boom, knock them, and they are dead. There are some people, the situation of life is so overwhelming to them that they are frozen in place. They are in the situation, their life is wasting away, but they are just frozen in that situation. No way of escape. In a situation like that, you need the uncommon grace of God to just wrap you up and bundle you up and extract you and put you to safety. And the Lord will do that for us this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Again, God did it when, when, when we read further, but because of our time, you know, in, 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 um, in uh, verse, verse 21, it was uh, saying to the, it was conversing with the angels, and the angels, uh, and he said to him, see, this is the angel telling him, I have favored, favored you concerning this thing also in that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. God waited for him on common grace. God waited for him. So what is on common grace? I put it here in my note, and you might want to put it down also. Uncommon grace is when there is no choice left and the only outcome is an utter waste of life and yet you get a breakthrough. That is uncommon grace. When all hope is lost. So all hope is lost and the, the, there's no choice and the only outcome is that the destiny will be messed up. The destiny will remain unfulfilled. The life will remain incomplete. And before you know it, boom, there's a breakthrough. That is uncommon grace. So the other examples I was talking, uh, I mentioned earlier on, and I will go through them quickly. We know the story of Noah, of judgment, but salvation. But the Bible said that Noah moved with fear when the information came to him that I am going to destroy this world. I want you to make an ark, and I want you to escape in the ark. He moved with fear, and he built an ark. He did something, and God saved him. When we looked at Gideon in Judges chapter 6, you can write this down. We won't expand on it. In Judges chapter 6, from verse 12 to 17, we see the, uh, a situation of hopelessness in the life of the children of Israel and Gideon being their spokesperson here. The Bible says that the Midianites would come and their cattle and their livestock in innumerable numbers. And they would just eat all of the produce of the children of Israel and would leave them nothing to eat for seven years. Imagine living from paycheck to, not even paycheck to paycheck, <laughs> paycheck to half of paycheck. Imagine opening a business for, for seven years. You are just pouring money into it, pouring money into it, loan after loan, loan after loan, pouring money into it. Imagine being married for seven years. No, no, no nothing. No nothing. Hopelessness. But there was a statement God made. He said, I will, the battle will be like you are fighting one person, even though you are fighting an army. But at least Gideon still went to war. Gideon received grace to fight thousands of people as if he's fighting one man. You know when you watch those Kung Fu movies in those days, and then you are fighting one guy, one guy, and then you just push that guy, boom. And the guy will rest on the other people and all of them will fall, and then you are the winner. I mean, that was the picture that came to my head. That you just fight one person. Because you've won one person, you've won all of them. Bible said of, of David, he killed Goliath. Goliath fell, and what happened to the rest of them? They picked race. 
God said, you will fight all of them as if you are fighting one man. So he received grace, but he still, he fought. That was an effort. But Lot, no, God just bundled him, hold his hand, and moved him out. When we look at David, in 2 Samuel chapter 15, uh, verse 26, and also you can look at verse 30. That verse 30 is so, uh, you know, so pathetic. But this was a great man. I mean, a whole David, a warrior, killer of tens of thousands, killer of Goliath, that he had to run out of uh, his kingdom because of somebody else. And in verse 30, the Bible said that he was barefooted. A whole king that would, I mean, his, his dinner, I don't know, his table, I don't know how many people will sit at that table, but a period of time came in his life that he had to walk without shoes on him. Without shoes of him. Let me, let me show you here, because I wrote a Yoruba proverb here. Uh, let's go to 2 Samuel. You will remember this when you are praying. <laughs> 2 Samuel chapter 15, I'll read from verse 25. Then the king said to Zadok, carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, it will bring me back and show me both it and his dwelling place. But if he says thus, I have no delight in you, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. If I find grace in the eyes of the Lord. So to me, what came to my mind was that David was saying, uh, when we the Bible say, Oti duro de buba shishi. If God have grace on me, so be it. If he doesn't have grace on me, so be it. How many people are in a situation that they are frozen in place in that wicked situation of life? And they said, if I die, I die. If I live, I live. Whatever happens, I take it as my fate. You need uncommon grace in a situation like that. For the hand of God to bundle you up and take you. So David prayed a prayer here. Lot did not offer any prayer. So when you compare all these instances of grace, when you compare all these instances of grace, those are the reasons why the grace of Lot, the grace he received, is unique. Noah moved with fear and built the ark. The grace of God upon him gave him the ability to do what he needs to do. Gideon went and fought a battle. Even though God reduced 22,000 people to 300 people, but he still did fight. So the grace of God upon him gave him the strength and the ability to be a winner. Same thing with David. He still prayed. But Lord did none of these things. So what is uncommon grace? This is my second point that I have. Uncommon grace is grace without responsibility. You have nothing to do in the case. You have nothing apportioned to, to you to do in the case. The, the outcome of the case does not depend on you, but it is just pure and purely the grace of God. So when we are praying regarding a situation and we are asking for the uncommon grace of God, this is what we are talking about. It is not who we know. It is not what we can do because we have done all those things. But yet the situation remains. Peter said that this, the soul of the Lord was tormented in that place. I, I mean, he, he was begging those people. He said, don't touch these people. They are my visitors. And the, the, the Bible says that the men of the city, both old and young, said, bring these men out because we need to know them carnally. 
We must know them carnally tonight. Imagine how much atrocities that he had witnessed, that he would just hold his head or even cover his face sometimes, that what is this that is happening around me? But what made his own grace, uncommon grace, is because his grace was without responsibility. And God waited for him. The angel says, I will wait here for you. I will wait here for you. So I'm going to wrap up here. We've had uh, transforming messages these past two days. Today is just to open our mind to let us know that when we pray and we ask for uncommon grace of God, we are not just talking words. You know, people might say, yeah, so what is the difference? Just ask for grace. But you now know what we are talking about. That there are some situations in life that the, 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 that attribute of God that will flow into your life will be so uncommon. And just for me to add this, when Jesus was comparing the time of his coming to, uh, just to give us a reference, he mentioned the days of Noah. He also mentions the day of Lot. That means they are very important. Same thing uh, Apostle Peter did. Mentioning the times of Noah, the wickedness of it, and mentioning the time of Lot, the wickedness uh, of it. Wickedness is in our own time too. But I'm not talking about the wickedness in the life of individuals. That some enemies, they have made themselves the pharaohs of your life. Some enemies, they, they have made themselves the, 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 uh, 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 the king and, and, the, and the lord of your life. And they have so much hold you down that you just can't shake yourself off. Or the next level of life that you want to get to is so insurmountable. That you have done every hard work you could do. You have, you have done your own part as much as you are able to do. But you are still not able to get over that hurdle to be able to reach the next step of life for you. Your prayer is, Lord, regarding this situation, I need your uncommon grace. Let your uncommon grace take me to my next level of life. Let your uncommon grace take me out of this situation. If not that the angel, I mean, it is even enough that God will come and tell you, danger is coming. Danger is coming. I mean, if you are, if you are in a store now, you are shopping, and somebody rang you and said, a bomb is going to go off in that store in the next five minutes. Are, are you going to say, Where, where's the bomb? Let me look at it. Oh, I need to do my shopping, Joe. You know, I have, I have so many to buy. No. You will, <laughs> there was this story that I, that, uh, no, not even a story, something that happened in elementary school. So the news came to our school that a cow had, had, had uh, gone loose. So that we all should stay in class, right? That no kid should go out because they couldn't really tell where the cow was at that time. And, you know, with the big horns and all that. And there was this, there was this uh, girl in our class that she sneaked out and she went home. So we were, we were doing head count every now and then, you know, so, so that we could know who, 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 you know, the people left in class. And we discovered that she, she just ran, you know. So the following day we said, why did you go say she was so afraid she needed to go get home. She needed to be with her parents. So the, what I want to bring out of that is that when you hear there is danger, your immediate reaction is to get out. But he lingered. He was just frozen in place. He was frozen in place. Some situations in our lives, we need that uncommon grace. So it is a valid prayer for us to pray. So you know that situation of life that it seems as if you are just frozen in place. No forward going, no backward going, no sideways going, no going anywhere. Frozen in place. But 
the angel held onto the hand of Lot and literally like dragged him out. Oh, Nikobawa, we have to do what we need to do here. You get out of this place and go and, and be in safety. So let's rise up as, 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 we, as we pray in our spirit that prayer point. Where is it that you needed to get to? The, your next phase of life. And you've tried. And you've tried. You've, you've done all the requirements. You've, you've put every square peg in square hole and, and, and round peg and round hole. But you are just still in that one position. You, just can't, you have really scratched your head. Where is the way forward? Today is the day to ask on common grace. Lord, just bundle me and put me in the next phase of life. Or what is that situation that you are just frozen in place? That dream that will never let you be. One year, two years, five years, six years, ten years. That same dream still tormenting you. That same situation still you are still in it. That outcome is still not forthcoming. And you have put all effort. Just begin to pray. I'm just, I'm just trying to really paint the picture for you. But you can begin to pray in your spirit. Just ask for the uncommon grace of God for liberation. Uncommon grace of God to make way. Uncommon grace of God to extract you. To get you out of this situation that wants to just waste your life, wants to just waste your years, wants to just make you to continue to wait, to continue to hope. Maybe Lot was thinking, maybe these people will get better. Maybe, maybe, maybe tomorrow will change. Maybe, maybe, maybe something would happen. Even when God said, I am going to destroy this city, it was still lingering. Maybe thinking of his sons in law, or thinking maybe something would happen to change the situation of his business or of whatever. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus that make your uncommon grace available for me this afternoon. I must not leave your house, Lord, today. And that situation still remains in my life. Because when you receive your victory in the spirit realm, by the time you open your eyes in the physical, it is yours. <laughs> it is yours. What is that next step of life that you needed to be? That next step of life you needed to be? That next step of life, that next initiative, that next opportunity that you have been dreaming, you have been open, you have been walking towards, but nothing seems moving. Uncommon grace. Lord, let your uncommon grace be made available unto me this afternoon. By your uncommon grace, you saved Lot from destruction. By your uncommon grace, you saved Noah from destruction. By your uncommon grace, you made Gideon to kill thousands as if they were one man. Lord, let your, let your uncommon grace be commended into my life this afternoon. Let your uncommon grace be released into my life this afternoon. I need to move on, O oh Lord. I need to move up, O oh Lord. To my place of destiny. To my place of fulfillment of purpose. To my place of fulfillment of destiny. To my place of fulfillment of your agenda. To my place of fulfillment of your plan. Let your uncommon grace catapult me to my next level. Let your uncommon grace catapult me to the next level. Let your uncommon grace